Yeah, well, look, I mean, at least some of these things, one can actually apply physics or, you know, one can analyze in a scientific way to say, is how many humans can Earth sustain without what, what most people will consider to be significant environmental damage. And I think if you actually do the numbers, um, I think it's potentially 10 times the population we have today. Right. Um, so, so how did you arrive? How did you arrive at that figure? I mean, obviously you put a fair bit of thought into this, and this is a very countercultural proposition. Since the mid 1960s, the moral proclamation has been that there are too many people on the planet, and that is, I think, Paul Ehrlich was the ultimate what exponent of that particular. Yeah, his, his analysis was very unscientific. He based it on some visit to Delhi, I believe. Right. Yeah. It right, and sort of visceral repugnance. Yeah, wrapped himself in science and, and produced nonsense. Um, so, I mean, you, you just say like, okay, well, how much land area do we need to grow food? Yeah. Um, how much would that encroach on natural habitats? What's the actual food growing potential given? Um, Especially if we got good at it. Right, and we are actually quite good at it. Yeah, getting right, better. right, right. Um, and um, uh, is there enough water? Well, actually, there's, there's plenty of water because Earth is mostly water. It's 70% water by... Mm, that's convenient. By surface area, yeah. Um, Desalination is actually ex very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's really not a, not a shortage of water. There's, there's not a shortage of, um, of, of sort of surface area and, mm -hmm. and energy to, to, build, to, to um, grow food. Um, and, there's uh, no shortage of computational time. And increasingly, there's no shortage. 